Hi, and thank you for joining me for another video. Friends, this week's Parsha is Parashat Tetzaveh, and this week's Parsha begins a little differently than last week's. Last week's Parsha, Parashat Truma, began with Moshe Rabbeinu asking for donations in order to build the Mishkan. However, in this week's Parsha, the Almighty tells Moshe that he should command the Israelites that it is obligatory for them to bring oil to keep the lamps of the menorah burning. To the point that the word tetzave means, you shall command. And the principle laid out here is that if you don't give or contribute towards your walk with God so that others could walk along with you, then friends, Torah Judaism is not your religion. As illustrated by this picture in the last two parshas, that perhaps you got out of contributing for the building of the Mishkan. However, you won't get out of keeping it going if you want to be part of Israel. Now, this goes against the modern day notion of receiving without contributing or because I exist I deserve and honestly how can anyone have a good excuse for not participating because here the Almighty is telling us that if you couldn't give gold or fancy yarns in the beginning that's fine he's giving you another avenue to be blessed through just pick some olives and make some oil and I really don't think a better illustration could have been given than the Mishkan and the menorah reminding us that the structure has been constructed willingly by righteous men now it's up to you and I to keep the fire burning because friends there's no way around it why because biblically a sign that you were in the covenant was always if you were ethically productive or not. Compare that to how things run nowadays in the Jewish community with our new age of religious entitlement. Friends it's seen daily that if you're religious or not, but happen to have had a Jewish mother, you're given free trips to Israel, you're given honors in the synagogue, you're given special treatment. So much about not showing favoritism and judging others by their ethical productivity. And if you're interested in Torah, Judaism, and sincerely have given up everything to get close to the God of Israel, but your mother wasn't Jewish, you have the doors literally slammed in your face. This, my friends, is the reality. But actually, they're just shooting themselves in the foot. These silly rabbis of today who condone such stupid behavior. Why? Because by bypassing the Almighty's Torah standards and acting unfairly and cruelly with others in an erroneous attempt to speed up the Geula, they actually only delay their efforts like we learn in Parshas Mishpatim that destruction comes upon us by mistreating converts and potential converts. And also, common sense should have told you that when you macarve someone, they only absorb as much as they put in. So the hanufa, the flattery shown to ethnic Jews is actually counterproductive. So in other words, they're only encouraging more irreligiosity through their bloodlust. And friends, it's not a coincidence that the Parsha then speaks about the leaders of Israel, how we should be careful in preparing them for service. Because typically a society is only as ethical and honorable as your leaders are, which is why the Hoshen, the uh, breastplate of the high priest contained the names of the 12 tribes of Israel because he was their representative and his religious state was typically synonymous to their religious state. Then it goes on to tell us that we should consecrate Likacho, we should make him holy. Now you're probably thinking, isn't it supposed to be the other way around? Not at all, friends. It's telling us that a leader is only as valuable as you make him. That's why we should make him holy. In other words, we should set him apart from our desires and our complaining. For example, this is actually the exact opposite we see in the Jewish world today. How? Well, when a Jewish community is looking for a rabbi, they first interview him to see what his views are like. And if his views don't coincide with the community's views, they don't hire him. So in other words, Jews nowadays don't want a leader. They don't want someone who's going to tell them what they don't want to hear. They don't want conviction or change. No, friends, what they want is a puppet. Which is why the Rambam writes in his commentary to Perkovos against rabbis for hire because it's their employer who end up deciding their convictions. And that's why this Parsha tells us that we should make them the Kohanim wholly set apart from our eagles because his success is our success. Which lays down another principle, which is that holy offices were always meant to be hereditary. Why? Because that's the only way they could function. We can even see it in our politics today. Not that this would work in a secular system, but when someone gets elected into office, they spend every day after that doing whatever the people want in order to get re-elected. Or how many times have I confronted rabbis about religious issues in their synagogues just to be told that they agree, but if they say anything, they would be fired. Or because they would perhaps offend an irreligious donor. Friends, the biblical leader should be able to lead and do what's right because it's the right thing to do. And this partial is reminding us that 
this is only possible if we set him apart, if we make him holy. Because he knew that their future was his future. And actually, from a literal perspective, because if he failed in leading the people into righteousness, he would be killed by the Almighty in the Holy of Holies. And actually, it clearly states that once we have consecrated Aaron and the Mishkan, then God will dwell among us. Meaning that from the outset, everything the Almighty did for us till now was only for us to come to emulate Him. And through the example of the priestly office, everything that we should strive to be like has been illustrated in human form to the point that the Almighty tells us that we should be a kingdom of priests. Because friends, in Judaism, holiness comes from the outside. Like this Parsha teaches that we sanctify the Kohen, we we set him apart and give him value, just like our personal lives, how we sanctify ourselves by good deeds and righteousness, only then to attain value. And friends, today I want to give you the opportunity of attaining the highest value you could possibly attain by becoming a Torah Jew yourself and by living by God's 613 mitzvahs, by His gold standard, by His holy instruction manual for humanity, by converting to Judaism. If you're interested in learning more about becoming a Jew, please visit BeJewish.org. And if you want to convert to Judaism, please visit Torah Judaism International at TorahJudaism.org. Thank you.